okay so i have another book haul stash in my mailbox for you quite a beastie haul i don't even know how many books it is i couldn't be bothered to count them um but first of all i have some things to show you um i have some bookmarks i've had these for quite a while but i kept forgetting to put them in the haul i just kept forgetting i've had them for about two months now but i just kept forgetting to show you so i bought a hagrid bookmark and it's uh, a metallic one that slips over the page and then won't fall out I really want a Professor Snape one, but I can't seem to find a Snape bookmark anywhere. Um, I also bought some mini page marker things. They're just basically really, they're smaller versions of that. And they're Looney Tunes ones. And they do loads of um, Looney Tunes ones, but I chose the Twee Pie and um, Sylvester ones. And they're all a different colour, and then on the other side, they're different pictures. So I really love them, and I got some Scooby-Doo ones. I'm a huge Scooby-Doo fan, so when I saw they had these, I grabbed them. And then I also have some swag. Marissa Meyer very kindly sent me um, some Scarlet stickers. Um, and two different types of bookmark. I've got uh, like a tall one. There with Cinder and Scarlet on, and then like the Lunar Chronicles and then some smaller ones um and a little another little sticker and she also sent me two signed book plates for my copies of cinder and scarlet um, and she sent those to me because last month i put up a q and a um on my blog with her to promote her being in the uk for a signing um, and I was really devastated that I couldn't go, so she said that she would send me these to sort of make up for it. So that was very kind of us. Thank you very much, Marissa Meyer. Okay, on to the books I received for review. Um, from Hodder, I have Siege by Sarah Mussey. Not sure how you say her last name, but we'll go in with Mussey. Um, and this sounds like it's going to be a very difficult, um, sort of heartbreaking read. It's about um, a school shooting and um i really like the how the back the blurb is in the shape of a gun and then you have like the bullet holes so i'm really intrigued about this book haven't heard too much about it so far uh from mirror inc i have the eternity cure by julie kagawa this is the sequel to the immortal rules i really really enjoyed the immortal rules um so I'm really excited to see where the story goes. Um, have a really great kick-ass heroine. Um, and it's really interesting with her being um, a vampire. So she's inherently sort of her own enemy. It was really, really interesting. Um, so really looking forward to seeing where it's going to go. Uh, then from HarperCollins, I have Myla 2.0. And it's by Deborah Dreiser, Dreiser, I really don't know how to say that name, I'm so sorry. This cover is so cool, it's one of my favourite covers. And it's sort of um, sci-fi suspense, um, this girl Myla um, is on the run, uh, men are following her to either reprogram her or completely break her apart, uh, she's sort of a cyborg, oh, it's going to be so good. This came out on the... 28th of March so I've had this one a little while but have, like with the scheduling I haven't managed to record and upload hauls in enough time that I'm getting them so I'm getting books faster than I can record if this makes any sense so I've had this one for a little while now but really looking forward to getting to it then from Penguin I have No Such Thing As Forever um, a girl heart boy novel by where's the author Ali Cronin and this is um, a YA contemporary novel and it's actually set in the UK um, so I was really pleased when I found that out I think it's set in Brighton because um, I love YA contemporaries but the majority of them take place in the US I've not actually read a contemporary yet that takes place in the UK so really pleased about that then from Choc Lit, I have one of their April releases, and that's The Wedding Diary by Margaret James. This is such a pretty cover. These butterflies are actually sort of um, sparkly, 
and it's about a woman who basically in a competition won a dream wedding and then her boyfriend dumps her and then this guy he proposes to his girlfriend and she turns him down so they basically get married um so the pair of them sort of i don't know how they meet or anything like that yet but um seems like it's going to be a really fun light read and the cover is beautiful so i have that then from bloomsbury i have the academy by monica sells sellies i i don't even know i just don't even know where to begin with that name and this is it's going to be the first in a series i think and it's about a girl who is a um is really really good at tennis and she wants to join this sort of sports academy and the only way you can get in is to be really really rich or to have a scholarship and she's good enough that she gets a scholarship but then there's all these rich kids there and it's like the bitchiness of it um so it seems it's going to be a bit like gossip girl or pretty little lies but set in a sports academy and monica we've already established i don't know her name is actually a grand slam title winner so that's really interesting. It's a shame that you don't get the full effect of this cover on cam because it's like neon um, fluorescent. It's it really pops. It's it's really cool, but it it doesn't show that very well on the cam. But yeah, it's like fluorescent. It's amazing. And this comes out on the sixth of June. And also from Bloomsbury, I have Dark Eden by Helen Douglas. This is obviously um, an arc. And this is a YA time travel novel, I think. And it sounds very sort of typical YA. This mysterious boy turns up new at school. Um, but I think it's set in Cornwall or Devon or Cornwall, which will be really, really interesting to have that sort of paranormal book set not too far from where I am like I'm along the south coast so I'm very familiar with the places so that would be really nice if that if I did read that right um so yeah looking forward to this this one doesn't come out until July so I probably won't be reading it um just yet but hoping that'll be really good uh next book I got for review is from Canongate and it's The Humans by Matt Haig. Um, I'm extremely intrigued by this book. It sounds extremely quirky and different and not like anything I've ever read before. Um, he is the author of The Radleys, which I've not picked up because it's not the sort of book, it didn't grab my attention, but this work, this, this book definitely has done. And I, if I enjoy this, I will probably pick up The Radleys. Um, and it's basically about this maths professor. One night he solves this huge mathematical riddle um, and these aliens don't believe that the human race is ready for the consequences of solving this um, mathematical problem. So they basically kidnap him and put an alien in his place and the story is told through the point of view of the alien and him sort of observing the humans. Um, so it seems like it's going to be really, really funny. It's got a great cover. And the end papers are like fluorescent green, which you can't see again. Um, but I'm hoping to get to this one soon because it sounds absolutely amazing. And it comes out on the 9th of May. So I'm hoping to pick that up soon. And then I have some books from Little Brown. I have The Secret of Ella and Micah. I'm not sure how you say this name. I thought it would be Micah because it's like the beginning of Michael. So that's what I'm going with, Micah. Um, by Jessica Sorensen and this is like a new adult contemporary novel and um, it was a very popular ebook um, at, we're hearing this story more and more now so it was a very popular um, self-published ebook and then Little Brown picked it up and I've already read this um, normally I don't read um, books before I haul them I don't know why I just feel the need I, I need to show them to you before I read them but I couldn't resist with this um, and I really, really loved it. It's very, very fast paced. I have actually already put up a review, so I'll leave that down below. But I gave it a five out of five. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Basically, Ella and Micah have been best friends forever. They both have kind of crappy lives, um, and but their feelings start to change for each other about the time they turn about sixteen. Um, 
and like their friendship carries on but um one night a tragedy sort of happens and ella can't cope with her feelings for micah so she basically runs away and disappears for eight months and micah can't like he doesn't stop searching for her um and it's like when she moves back and then dealing with their feelings this is a book one which i'm really pleased about because i had like um a few like unanswered questions and stuff but thoroughly enjoyed this one um and it actually ca it came out on the 11th of april and it was really really good um also from little brown i have whiskey beach by nora roberts as you guys know i like my nora roberts books um this is her latest um when did this one actually come out i think it came out on like the 22nd and again i've already read this and i picked it up because i was in a huge reading slump i didn't know what to read um and this was just calling my name so i thought screw it i'll just read it um loved it this has to be one of my favorite Nora Roberts books ever so glad I picked it up um it's basically about um a criminal attorney called Eli and he's his wife was murdered and basically he there isn't a shred of evidence against him really but people still don't believe that he's innocent and he's being hounded so he moves back to his family home of Whiskey Beach and his family home of Bluff House um but the problems don't leave him alone um you have um a police detective basically hounding him trying to catch him out um and someone's digging up something in his um basement um and there's a romance oh my god i loved it i think i liked it because it was actually in more in the guy's point of view than the girl's point of view um which most of the Nora roberts books i've read they're all in the girl's point of view so i absolutely loved it um loving this cover as well it's beastie hardback as well but i read it in a couple of days loved it and then last book from little brown is lover at last by jr ward this is this the 11th book in the black dagger brotherhood i think it's book 11 um and i was kind of pissed actually because it's the only book so far um over here to come out straight away in hardback so again like none of the you can probably make them out along here none of the books are like the same size it's so annoying um, but this is the book that fans of the series have been waiting for because it's a male male sort of pairing and it's Quinn and Blay and throughout the whole series everyone's like they need to be together but they haven't been and it's very frustrating so this is supposed to be the book so we shall see that came out on the 28th of March so again another book I've had for a little while um, okay I also took a trip to the works um, I blame Deborah at Deborah's Book Cafe because the reason I went in there was because she hauled a book that I really, really wanted and I thought, right, let's go to the works. And I went to two different works and neither shop had the book I actually went for, but I ended up with a load of books, so it's all Deborah's fault. All Deborah's fault. That's why I'm telling myself anyway. Um, I bought a notebook. I bought this notebook covered in moustaches. I absolutely loved it. It was like £2, I think um it's really really cute um the only thing is like the ruling is really wide but um i wanted it just for the moustaches so there's that um i bought a box set um it's quite heavy so okay i bought um the millennium trilogy by steve glasson here we go and they only had two of these left and the other one was water damaged so i basically had the last decent one and it was 10 pounds but this box set should be 70 so i saved 60 pounds um so you can see you got the dragon there and they're basically just cloth bound hardbacks um of the girl with the dragon tattoo the girl who played with fire and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest and this was such a good deal because i've been tempted to read the trilogy but i hate the paperback covers um, absolutely hate them um, but, but in the end I bought these hardbacks for like £10 which works out cheaper than buying like all three paperbacks but extra I get this afterward here and it's basically um, about the writing of it and exchanges of emails from like the translator and stuff and you also get a poster of all the international covers and some of the covers for the series are super creepy it's not a poster I would put on the wall because it's just it's no so that was an absolute bargain it's also really heavy um i also picked up some books in the three for five pound deal that they do um i got a great and terrible beauty by libba bray 
after reading The Diviners by her last year, I have wanted to get all of her books, but it's just something I haven't got around to actually getting yet. But when I saw they had the first book, I grabbed it. So it's a historical fiction it's set in like 1895. Um, so yeah, it's the first in her Gemma Doyle trilogy. And then they also had The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. This is like a fairy tale-esque um, book and it's about a boy that when his mum dies he takes sort of solace in um, reading her books but then it seems like the books are talking to him so it seems a little dark a little creepy I've heard really great things about it so I have that this isn't the fav my favorite cover that I've seen for this book but um, yeah I have that and then the last book I got was uh, The Rogue by Trudy Canavan this is a uh, high-end sort of fantasy but this is a book two um, in a trilogy it's the traitor spy trilogy but um, I've wanted to read Trudy Canavan for quite a while now um, but you know just just again not getting around to it but because this was so cheap and in with the three for five I thought at least I can pick up book two and I'll pick up book one um, at another time so just have it ready basically so yeah there's that and then the last two books that I've got I pre-ordered uh, Walking Disaster by Jamie Maguire. Um, this is the companion novel to Beautiful Disaster. Um, the only difference in these books supposedly is that this is basically the same story but in Travis's point of view. Um, I actually haven't read Beautiful Disaster yet. I wanted to wait until this was out. I still don't know when I'm going to get to them but at least now I have them. Um, and you guys know I love um, books that either have dual perspectives or the guy's point of view, you know, throughout. So really pleased that this has come out anyway. So I have that. And the last book that I have is Oz, The Complete Collection, Volume 1. I love these editions. Um, they are so, so pretty. So I'm going to be collecting, there's um, five volumes and you'll be seeing them in like the next few hauls because I'm definitely buying these. This one has The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Marvelous Land of Oz and Ozma of Oz. So the first three books. Um, I've wanted the to actually own my own copies of the Oz books for quite some time but I can never find editions that I like that publish all of the stories. They tend to only publish like the first two I can find like in this in matching editions um, so really pleased that they're bringing out these in these really gorgeous volumes so yeah love these um, and they're really reasonable as well they're like under five pounds on Amazon which is like insane so that was my huge haul I still have other books to like show you but like there's just too many so you'll be seeing another haul at some point from me uh, thank you so much for watching and happy reading